Welcome back everyone to my moldy plate reality check video part 2, the results section. I was hoping to get our discussion into this video as well, but there's a lot of information in our results and I want to keep the video length reasonable. So without further ado, let's dig into what we found. Beginning with the samples that we took with professional equipment, our hallway sample had five fungal colonies and one bacterial colony. Our outdoor plate had a lot of colonies develop, over 50, with two bacterial and one yeast colony as well. The classic hand dryer grew 15 fungal colonies with one yeast colony. And finally, the blessed Dyson Airblade grew 33 fungal colonies and had the highest fungal diversity of any of the plates. Unfortunately, that diversity worked to our disadvantage, as by day three, the plate was half taken over by a very aggressive fungus in the family Mucoraleys. This family includes the genera Mucor and Rhizopus, which many of you may recognize as the classic bread mold that's often illustrated in high school textbooks. When rhizopus takes over a plate, it makes it almost impossible to get pure subcultures out of the mix. So, we were denied some of the information that I would have liked to take from this plate. Because the hallway and the outdoor samples were taken under controlled conditions, we have standardized results in the form of colony forming units per cubic meter and spores per cubic meter. Note that with the Anderson system, this is a viable capture system, so we are counting colonies that actually grew, where the spore trap method is a visual account of the spores, which may or may not have been viable. Next, let's consider the locations that our samples were taken. This is a vital consideration for any investigation. The spores that you capture and the colonies that you grow represent the environmental conditions of the site. That's the basic premise of air quality monitoring. The professional samples were taken in a relatively urban area, but there were grassy parkways and residential areas nearby, so a fairly broad spectrum of inoculum sources. The classic hand dryer sample was taken near a park with a golf course nearby and a lot of residential upwind. Finally, the Dyson Airblade sample was taken inside a commercial building with several barriers to airflow from the outdoors. However, we found the most diversity in the sample as well, which was very interesting. The area in general is urban. The upwind areas are residential, and uh, typically in these areas we have a large variety of landscaping plants. Downwind, we had several large grassy areas that are not very well maintained. They're not so much for public use, and they do experience disturbance, so the potential for soil-borne fungi was there. Now let's have a look at the fungi that actually grew on our plates. I will list each fungal genus that was found and which sites they were taken from. First we have Cladosporium, which is very commonly associated with grass. It is a decomposer that grows on dead grass thatch and other decaying vegetation. You can find incredible blooms of Cladosporium after a lawn is mowed and irrigated, for example. Next we have Alternaria, which is a decomposing fungus typically found on decaying vegetation, very common in the outdoors. Of course, we have penicillium, the cosmopolitan fungus that can be found virtually anywhere. It's just as happy in the outdoor environment on dead vegetation as it is on the foodstuffs that you've kept a little too long in the fridge. On the classic hand dryer sample, we found bipolaris, which is not unexpected. The hand dryer was near a park, and bipolaris is a known pathogen of grasses. It's also a facultative decomposer, so it can go both ways, common in areas that have grass. Surprisingly, we only had one case with Aspergillus. Aspergillus, like penicillium, is cosmopolitan. It can be found virtually anywhere. 
Aspergillus can be a genus of concern because certain species are pathogenic to animals. When Aspergillus forms an infection, usually with immune-compromised patients, it's called Aspergillosis. The next three genera were found specifically with the Dyson sample. The first is Paciliomyces, which is very similar to Penicillium. Uh, it has a different uh, growth form. You can see the differences in the spore structure, which are more lemon-shaped. It's a decomposer of vegetation. Here we have Rhizopus, which I mentioned earlier. Many of the zygomycetes lack the broad spectrum of enzymes that the other fungi have, so they tend to act on simpler nutrients. But so long as the substrate they're on has the nutrients that they can digest, they grow incredibly rapidly. They grow so fast that they don't even form septations in their hyphae. The last organism that we have from the Dyson plate is a yeast called Areobacidium. This is a really interesting fungus because it has a mycelial phase and a yeast phase. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you learned something new. Please help me out and share this video. I'd like everyone who saw the first part to see the continuation. The third part of this project, the discussion section, is in the works and will be available soon. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you.